Hey guys, what's going on? Hope everybody's doing good out there today. Welcome back to the channel. And today I've got a really special tip for you. And you know, these videos that I'm doing, as you guys know, I've been doing, you know, one or two videos a day for a long time now. And um, some of the, you know, every video that I do, you know, there's learning value to it. There's information that you can use that's really gonna help your fishing in these videos. And some of them are gonna be more helpful than others, you know because you just can't, you can't put out like the same, you know, quality of information as far as things that really, uh, that really give you, you know, quantum leaps in the success that you're going to have on the water. So every tip is going to have some level of success. And the tip that I give you guys today is one of those ones that's going to give you a lot of success. It's sort of, sort of one where I've been hesitant to talk about a little bit because it's been so productive for me, but I'm going to give it up anyway here. And this, tip that I've given you guys is sort of a tribute to Doug Hannon because Doug Hannon is the one Doug Hannon is the one who showed me how to do this. And if you guys don't know who Doug Hannon is, uh, you're definitely not old school because Doug Hannon, in my opinion, is one of the most influential figures in bass fishing period. He he, he his claim to fame was back in the seventies and eighties, he was known as the bass professor. And um Doug was like he he lived in Florida and he was the one that, you know, I've talked about him a little bit before. He was the one that has caught over 300 documented 10 pound bass in Florida, which is unbelievable. I mean, I've probably fished 500 days in Florida or more in my career and I caught one 10 pound bass, you know, in that time frame. And Doug has caught over 300 that he has documented, uh, you know, catches with that. And the bait that I'm going to show you guys today, the swimming worm, Doug told me that over a hundred of those 10 pound plus bass came on the swimming worm. And he, I just can't say enough about him. Like I said, if you guys don't know Doug Hannon, he is one of the, he, back in the day in the eighties and nineties, he was one of the most influential figures as far as teaching about bass behavior. He was way ahead of his time. He knew things back in the seventies and eighties and early nineties that, that most people were just not aware of. That's all he did. He basically was a, uh, a sort of a, I guess you'd call it a, a, an instructor. I mean, he did a lot of work for Bassmaster Magazine back there. You know, I think he did some work with some different companies, but basically he was an educator and instructor. He had sort of, that was his full-time position. Never fished tournaments, never wanted to fish tournaments, but he was without a doubt one of the top big bass experts in the world. So anyway, I got to know Doug through the Bassmaster Classic several times. Doug used to come to the Classic, and uh, back then, Bass would put him in charge of basically the live release of fish because Doug had developed live well systems. He developed live well additives. You know, he had a lot of knowledge about taking care of bass, and Doug would come to the Bassmaster Classic to basically oversee the fish care at the Classic. So I got to know Doug from the Classic, and um, I got to have a chance to sit down and spend a lot of time with him at the 1992 Classic at Logan Martin Lake. Um, we sort of hit it off, got talking, you know, spent a couple hours talking, and, you know, I was just absorbing all the information he gave me, and he told me, he said, man, if I can ever help you out, give me a, a call. So, anyway, we had a tournament at the St. John's River shortly after that, um, and I had never been there at that point, and Doug lives, lived pretty close to the St. John's River, and he, uh, I called him up and just was just wanted to get some, you know, overview, some advice on it. And he told me, he said, Randy, he said, the bait you need to throw, if I was in that tournament, the only one I'd throw is the swimming worm. And I'd never heard of the swimming worm. Most people today have never heard of the swimming worm. I bet a lot, of, most everybody that's watching this video has never heard of the swimming worm. So anyway, I took that bait the way he showed me, wound up finishing the top 10 in the tournament, and I've used it ever since in a lot of different situations. So I'm gonna show you guys how to rig, how to fish a swimming worm, which is it's just unbelievable deal here. It's really simple. First thing you wanna do um, is, is the hook. Doug used the old true turn worm hook, and I sort of modified mine into the straight shank worm hook. But what you wanna start out with is you want a small straight shank hook. And I prefer like a one aught, no more than a two aught. You wanna use a small hook on this because not only do you land the fish better, but it gives the bait better action. What you wanna do if you don't have the true turn is you wanna take your hook and bend this hook out to the right a little bit. Just where it's, where it's offset. Just, 
just you guys can see that a little bit just a little bit just a little bit of offset there not much and what this does this actually allows the worm to swim and spin more i'm going to show you rigging it the next part is the rigging and the rigging is everything on this particular setup back then doug was using the old cream scoundrel worms and the cream made one a bit a little bit longer and this was back before the zoom trick worm so i use the zoom trick worm now colors that you use on it, it doesn't really matter Usually you're matching the water clarity. Um, for the most part, you know, I like to keep it pretty natural, um, but here's the key rigging on there. So you wanna come through, and this is the important part, guys, on this rigging. This rigging's gotta be straight coming through here. And this, this takes a lot of patience because you're rigging this thing way down in the worm. So you gotta spend your time really uh, making sure this thing is centered in the, in the middle of the worm. And Doug told me, you know, we had a long talk about this and, you know, he, he was talking to me about bass behavior and the things that basically trigger, you know, fish to bite. And this is basically the thing that he came up on his own over years of fishing in Florida for big bass. So you can see how far I'm still going down there. I'm still going down. So what you want to do is you want to come I'm, see, I'm already up to the head of the worm now, and I'm, and I'm coming, I've got, I'm even past the head there. So this is the hard part, is when you get it here. You, you keep coming down, and the, the point is, you want to come to over halfway uh, past the uh, mid part of the worm before you bring it out. So here's the, here's the key deal. I'm going to bring it out now. And you bring it out at a completely 45 degree angle like that. So the worm is hanging like this, you know, all crooked. You got your hook sitting out just like that. And then of course, what you want to do, this is since this thing's spinning, it twists your line like crazy. You've got to have a barrel swivel. So you attach a barrel swivel. I don't have mine in the room here, about 12 inches above it. So anyway, here's the setup like this. And this, what you do, this, this worm, it just goes around in a circle like that when you reel it in. It just, it just, it just corks, corkscrews, corkscrews like that. I can't really show you that well, but it's basically just corkscrewing through the water, tw swimming like that in a straight, in a straight line. And what you want to do is you throw it out there and just hold your rod tip a high and just reel it straight in. The weight of the uh, barrel swivel. We'll keep the bait you know just under the surface you want to fish this thing most of the time within sight or just barely out of sight and this thing is just going around crazy in a circle i mean a lot of times you guys have seen it if you had a crooked rig plastic worm it just goes nuts in a circle that's the point of this thing is to get it where it just spins completely in a circle just like that and doug calls it the swimming worm and there's something about this setup there's something about the subtleness of the straight-tailed worm and the action that it comes through the water, that those big ones will just absolutely hammer it. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. So most of the time, um, I'm fishing this thing like on 12 to 15 pound test for a carbon line. Um, I prefer to, to fish it on a bait caster simply because of the size of the fish that this thing generates, unless I need to make a super long cast. The best success that I've had around the swimming worm has been when it's around some type of, of object. I've had good success in Florida around shallow grass with it. I've had good success around some docks and some stumps, lay downs, that type of stuff. But if I'm making shorter casts with it, I'll use the bait caster. And if I'm using, uh, having to make longer casts, then I'll upgrade with a spinning rod with 10 to 12 pound test line. But, and another thing is the barrel swivel on the thing. It just depends on your, how far you want the bait to, you know, how, you know, for the casting distance, the heavier barrel swivel will help you out and how far you want to get the bait under the water column. But just keep your rod tip high and just start reeling, reeling like that, having that worm swim around. And I wish I had some on the water video with this. At some point I may make that, but this is sort of just a video I'm doing here in the tackle room. But give it a try. This is something, like I said, most people have never seen it. They've never heard it. Um, under the right situation and this is the time of year i like to fish it anytime you know late spring is when this thing really works good anytime that they're in that same water column to hit like a swim jig or floating worm or a fluke shallow like that it's a really good way to catch them 
most of the time it's going to be a lot more effective in a little bit cleaner water. So I like the, my ideal water clarity for it is sort of that three to four foot zone. And again, there's something about it that works really good around aquatic vegetation, whether you're fishing in Florida, you know, Texas lakes, some of the TVA lakes, it works really good around that. But I have caught them just on bare banks. So there it is, uh, sort of a salute to Doug Hannon, the swimming worm, bait that has produced over 110 pound bass for Doug Hannon in the state of Florida. Um, and I don't know why more people haven't, I, I do not know why this bait has not caught on. This is one of those baits that is deadly and you just don't hear anything about it. It's like nobody fishes the thing. I, just, I don't really understand why. Maybe because Doug never really talked about it much. Maybe there may be pros out there using it that aren't talking about it. For me, it's been very situational. It's like the bass are either on it or they're not on it. But when they're on it and they're in that personality and that mood to bite a bait in this type of a, of a style, it's just completely deadly. So again, guys, give it a try. Just use your favorite straight tail worm. You know, rig it like I told you guys with it. I'll try to do some more videos at a later date and get some on the water footage with it to sort of show you guys how it works in the water, show how I cast it and that type of stuff. So I wanted to share that with you guys and just uh, I got thinking about Doug Han and actually I was on YouTube a couple days ago and I saw an old video on Doug and it made me think about that and what made me want to do this video on it. So anyway, I was really fortunate to get a chance to be able to spend some time, uh, you know, with Doug and get the probe his mind and ask questions about it. And if you guys have never heard of Doug Hannon, just Google Doug Hannon and you'll see what I'm talking about. So anyway, hope you guys liked the video. Much appreciated. Please subscribe if you haven't. Hit that like button. We'll talk to you later.